Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to Kerbal Space Program. So last episode we made our Duna return trip and this episode I'm undertaking a Duna orbital station uh, that will be very, very, very temporary. So I already have, I already did a little bit of building and testing uh, off camera, but let me just explain what I got here. Uh, what I got here is the mobile lab that I need, a little crew quarters that adds to the population because I need five, and then the lander can. Uh, I've got the experiment control units here with all of the experiments and then some. I probably have way too many photovoltaic panels in there. A docking port up top, a little communicatron. Uh, let me move that communicatron just so that it's not embedded. All right, little communicatron. And this satisfies the requirements of antenna, docking port, generate power, support five Kerbals, research lab, all that stuff. And then I have a heat shield on the bottom for re-entry, and I've already tested, and the parachutes I have on this thing is enough to slow it down so that we don't fatally crash. Uh, okay, so the challenge now is to get this bad boy to Duna and back. So what I'm gonna do is some very, very familiar asparagus staging. But I am going to use a lot of fuel. All right, let's see, that's not straight. Okay, that is nice and straight. Um, let's put the adapters on the top. This is for a liquid and oxidizer, yes. And then even above that, the nose cones. So now my ship has disappeared. Maybe I'll lower these a little bit. Just so that the top is the highest point. Like that. Not bad. Uh, then I have to decide on... So let's see. Um, the center stage here is going to have a decoupler and then its own fuel but not a whole lot of it uh, okay and then the engine I'm gonna have here is the Wolfhound which is a very uh, fuel efficient engine for space it has a uh, vacuum ISP of 380 beating out even the Poodle engine of 350. Um, it's only second to, of course, the the atomic uh, nerve engines, but they don't have, they're liquid fuel only, and they require a lot of power. Um, or not a lot of power, they, yeah. They're, they're very, very, very cool for like long distance, uh, but I don't want to have a liquid, I don't want to have an atomic rocket motor for this mission. Um, now I have to decide what engines go here. Uh, I could do skiffs. Now the other issue is of course landing. Um, so let's see, what do, I, what do I want here? I want something that has decent vacuum ISP, isn't too heavy, and it needs okay, uh, it could be, oh, swivels are teeny. It could be, um, needs to be okay in Atmo. Kodiaks are probably not enough. Thrust to weight. No, they're not. And they just kind of look weird. Uh, I think it needs to be wider. So I'm really looking at like... Unless I want a weird... That would... These would be enough to, to break Atmo of Duna. Um, yeah, I could do bobcats, because my alternative is cheetahs, which is better than vacuum, but terrible on Duna. Yeah, I could do bobcats. It's not a whole lot of thrust, but uh, it should be enough, which means I need to a little bit change the layout of the ship so that landing gear could work. So let's lower these even more. Okay, that's probably about as low as I can go. Uh, let's see. If I slap some landing gears on here, will they reach below? They do. Barely, but they do. All right, cool. And this will allow me 
the gravity on Dune is different, so it'll allow me enough thrust to weight to uh, be fine on Duna. Okay. Uh, providing, providing that I do not ditch. Okay, let's do. Let's queue it for Duna. So it's three, three, five thrust to weight. Uh, so even if I ditch two of these engines, it should be just fine. Just fine indeed. Okay. Back to Kerbin. Uh, so. That's all set. Now I want to strut them all together. So I'm going to have each one strut to the middle. Twice. As I've had some wobbly flopping. Uh, that sounds dirty, but wobbly flopping in my past crafts, and I'd rather not have that. And then strut them to one another. Cool. So they're pretty stable now. Um, okay, now I want to asparagus stage them off. So the first stage I'm going to have is the front and back stages that block doors. It doesn't block the, the door that matters, though. So that would be this. Let's get rid of that, that, this, and this. So that's my first stage that breaks off, front and back, and they'll feed to the right. So, okay. And now, uh, let's see. Let's absolutely undo what I just did. I misclicked. And I screwed everything up, didn't I? Wow, go me. I am fantastic today. Um, let's do this again then. Yikes. So, three and six to five. And four and two. Save. Fuel ducks. Oh, I'm going to have to... Oh, no. It should be fine to do it like that? No, no, it's not fine to do it like that. We don't want them all to feed to one another. So I'm going to have to do the field ducks individually. So this phase goes to here and to there. And then these phases go like that. And then this one goes from there to the middle. So fancy. All right, so this whole thing should be properly asparagus staged now. Yep, it does, I believe, look correct. Perfect. Um, let's see. What else can I do here? Uh, I don't... do. How much stability, inline stability, do I have? Not a whole lot. I'm going to add one more inline stability. Um, oh, is that one right there? Yeah, it is. Okay. I don't need it then. Save. Okay. Now, I just need to get this thing towards Duna. Right? That is the next goal. So, let's see. If I have a stack separator, is these... No, those are too big. Which size is this? That's technically the correct size, but... Because um, I'm using smaller engines than the form here. Uh, what I want on this phase is my new massive tanks. But they're going to overlap with one another. So I'm not actually going to worry about these stack separators. What I'm going to do is put these separators out there. I have a lot of money. 
Um, so I'm going to use said money to really fuel my ship like a ridiculous amount. Uh, so let's see. Is there fuel adapters that even fit this massive thing? I wish you could tell like how big a fuel adapter was uh, more easily because oh it would be here and then these nope 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 come on is there no fuel adapter for that size maybe there isn't Oh, there we go. Oh my goodness. I, uh, yeah, th this is starting to look ridiculous. I kind of like it, though. I'll just make it, like, crazy colors. Alright, so that's a whole lot of fuel there, right? Uh, let's make it even more ridiculous. Add another one of these massive tanks. Yes. There we go. And then down here, we're going to want probably the most powerful engines that we can afford, these mammoths. Why are those? Why do they have small form factors? Is there something bigger than a mammoth that I'm not aware of? Uh, so this, what, thrust 4K? No, I, don't, I think that's the biggest. And I could even asparagus stage these out, if I so chose. But hold on, let me check with my uh, researchers, my little R&D, to see if, of course, the mammoths are the end-all be-all of very heavy rocketry. So mammoth at 4K, yes, it does, I do believe that that is correct. So back to the VAB. I like how there's like a teeny, that used to be big, but now it's like teeny little craft in there. Cool. Uh, that looks pretty grand. Uh, so what are all these stages? So... Save that. So the thrust that I got here for the curb and liftoff is not enough. Um, let's see if I dump some of the fuel, what my delta V and lift looks like. If they would. All right, 0.86, that's pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna save that and see if some SRBs will get me over that 1.0 point nine five yeah they'll get me over the 1.0 so I'm gonna just I think there's an ongoing joke with all of you that I just when in doubt slap more SRBs on but uh, that's exactly what I'm gonna do So this is 1.9. All right, let's just uh, let's go crazy, right? This is a celebration of getting a station on Duna. At this point, I feel like I'm making some sort of like mega death ray. Uh, okay, so 1.2. That's exactly where we want it. Uh, then, of course, we need to strut like madmen. So I'm going to strut the SRBs up so that they're three points of contact. And then I need to strut all of the mammoth stages to one another. And then to the center of the ship. So let's do center of the ship first. That should be pretty easy. Done. 
and then to one another for stability. And my computer's like, what are you making? My lag, my latency. All right, so that's to one another. Those, that strut looks particularly wonky. Let's try to clean that up a bit. That should be a little bit more even. All right, that's a big old craft there. Um, I'm trying to think of other stability that I might need to add. I'm really curious how this is even going to fly. So let me um, stabilize it just a little bit more. That should be pretty good. Pretty ridiculous. This ship is pretty ridiculous. I am not going to lie. The launch phase is just absurd and inefficient and I love it as I always do all right so let's put the launch gear there and then um do I want to asparagus stage maybe mayhaps maybe I do okay so let's asparagus stage in the same way we did before which is to say uh, these two let's find them too so get rid of this that this and that these will be the first off and we'll do counterclockwise like we did before let's get rid of that and get rid of that okay that looks about right save just so that if I screw it up I can put it back now there's no center rocket um, but that's totally fine. <laughs> uh, oh, I need to turn off Symmetra here. And my computer is having a, uh, CPU heart attack now. You can handle it. I know you can, you little workhorse. I've put you through worse. I've launched a craft with 400 Kerbals and landed on Duna. I've definitely put you on through worse. 400 Kerbals looked very silly, mind you. All right, so this is the last of the asparagus staging, and then I'm gonna have a test flight where I don't actually launch for real. Save. Delta V at Kerbin, do good. Okay, let's, this is the test launch. Uh, eventually I'm going to want to add some additional pilots to it. I can have, or not pilots, but I can have a scientist and an engineer all come on the same trip. And that way I can also level up uh, the full cadre of, uh, of Kerbals. Um, the extra scientist and the extra engineer will make the science and power of my new um, little science base even more powerful. So, I don't think you can hear me. Phases are wrong. And this is why we have a test flight.
on the amount of liquid fuel I'm using. And now my computer will have a heart attack as I ditch the SRBs. Oh, there we go. Our thrust to weight is greater than one. We're still good. We're still good. My uh, potential delta V is fluctuating in the most hilarious way possible. I should start tilting. I should have started tilting a while ago, but it's hard to tilt with SRBs on. And because I tilted incorrectly, it uh, blew up. But as I did announce, that was a test flight, and I have to say it worked. My Delta V1 ditch in the SRBs was perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, so here's the thing. I can add... Let's get rid of Jeb. He's already made this mission. So Valentina and um, Bill and Bob. Now all I need is a Ted or something. Okay, so this craft is all set to go. 100% set to go. Um, now I'm going to leave because launch windows. Yes, as crazy as that seems, uh, I want to get to the right launch window. So, taking a look at my missions here. None involve Ike or Duna. Uh, okay. Let's go into the tracking station. And accelerate time to the launch window. So another thing I want to do is, in the launch window, I want to launch this into a parking orbit. And I also want to launch another craft. I don't want to launch one, but two. So, um, just a quick reminder, it's ksb.olex, O-L-E-X, dot, um, B-I-Z. And that gives you the transfer windows. So, I am so out of phase with Duna, it's kind of a joke. Um, what I should have done, if I was really thinking about it, is to, when I was in the correct launch window, launched a new this new craft while still landing the last one. Um, you don't need, they, they can easily run in parallel, right? Like... So that's what I should have done, but didn't. Uh, which actually means what I need to do is... Let's go back to the vehicle assembly lab. Building, whatever you want to call it. And my game is like, no, don't make us load this monstrosity. Uh, what I need to do is... Uh, let's see... I need to also have something that can dock. So what I'm gonna do here is redesign this a little bit. So let's go ahead and take, oh my God, my game's like, what are you trying to do? Take these off and I'll just leave them aside so I can work a little bit easier and even, yeah, that's fine. So, uh, what we can remove from this craft because I want two crafts is I can remove this lab oh come on it keeps making me click the wrong things here this yes thank you so my new ship won't need the lab and then also won't need the crew quarters at the top. So I'm going to put the batteries here. And um, I don't want to cover up my windows. So I'm going to put, uh, oh, yeah, I can put my drogue chutes on there. That'd be weird. And this covers up the door, which is a little bit of an issue, but I'll fix that in a moment. So this needs to dock with uh, the space station. Come on, can you lock in? Thank you. 
So there's how it's going to dock. And we've condensed that down considerably. I like it. Uh, it doesn't need a communication. But power generation and all that will be nice. Um, so this is going to be a significantly lighter vessel. If I could center on it. Because uh, it's ditching the mobile app. But because it's the docking one, I'm also going to want a little bit of monoprop feel. Because uh, that will allow me to maneuver. And then I'll add some RCS as well. So that's probably more monoprop fuel than I need. Uh, let's put a reasonable amount. Honestly, that's probably more than I need to, but but that's fine. All right, so that's sort of our docker. Um, let's see. Uh, I will slap everything together and then plan out my RCS. So this then has to reconnect. Um, yes. And then I'll make sure... This is RHD 17.5. I'm kind of launching them both at the same time. This has all the same experiments, making sure, yep, all that carried over. Uh, so the only thing that didn't carry over was strutting. Some of the strutting got removed. So do six times. Oh, that didn't work. I'll do it from here then. Cool, that worked. Um, of course, the solar power panels on this one suck because uh, they will extend straight into the craft itself. Um, I'll think that over. I think. Honestly, the best way to do it would be to have the little 3x2s. If these extend... Damn it, that's not what I meant to click. If these extend, how will it look? Alright, that'll work. Very fancy. Uh, already exists. Yes. Overwrite. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. And then, of course, this big old monstrosity of a phase gets slapped back on. And I'll have to check all of its uh, staging and all that. I can't just assume that it got put back correctly. So that would be very bad. And then there's also some other things I can do, which is to add uh, arrow braking to the landing phase. Yeah, so a lot of the asparagus staging blew apart here. So let me fix that and then fix a lot of the other little errors. And I want both crafts all set, ready to go. Um, when the Duna phase is in order. So two and five. Because I'm kind of going to be la launching them in tandem. All right. And that looks right. This should launch with them. All of these separators for the SRBs please drag my uh, CPU is like can't handle this craft okay there we go dragging so it is somewhat of a complicated launch but I like it 
is I'm putting these two crafts that are going to basically follow each other and dock with one another uh, in Duna orbit during a very specific launch window. So it's, it's cool. Alright, save. Over right shore. Okay, so now um, it's asparagus staged. Everything looks correct. Uh, that phase should be higher. Also keeping in mind that uh, this craft will not have an engineer on board, meaning that we can't repack the top chutes, uh, whereas the other one will. So speaking of top chutes, let's go ahead and add some chutes to this. Now it doesn't need to have a perfect amount of chutes. Like I'm not necessarily zero engine burning for my Duna landing, I probably will engine burn a little bit, but it helps to uh, to have some of these. But right now I'm being driven absolutely mad bonkers by uh, the lag of this massive craft. And this isn't even the worst one I've ever built. I have heard that some people said that um, this last patch has slowed down their Kerbal space program a little bit, and uh, I find that believable. Okay, I'm sure phase one that has all the shoots are going to um, are going to be moved around mid-flight, but moving one phase around is pretty easy, and then all the remainder shoots here. Uh, what happened here? Just trying to get it all correct. There we go. Goodbye, two. So the way this looks is an overwrite. We have the SRBs, the kickbacks, help us break Atmo. Um, these massive engines do their work, they get asparagus off, and then everything inside the asparagus, the inner asparagus, then kicks off. Uh, looking at these briefly, some of the struts didn't carry over, so let me repair those strutting. I'm not sure that these are necessary, so I'm going to scrap them. So I think this is about cleaned up and ready to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and um, open up regular old 17 and fix that up a little bit because there were some errors as well. And each of these cost just shy of a million. Alright, so the big glaring error here was the kickbacks were out of phase. Actually, it's going to be easier if I just move the engines to stage 10, stage 10, up to stage 5. I don't know why I didn't do this before. And stage 6, down to stage 10. Alright, that part is done. Alright, these parachutes, stick them together. And then save this at 17. Cool. And then, um, just like our last one, let's create a new stage here. Expand that stage. And please put these parachutes where I want them. Yes. It seems to be working. Okay. Cool, cool. And then these are our Duna parachute stages. Cool. Save. Alright, uh, so taking a look at this real briefly, we've got the launch, the kickbacks, the mammoths, kill all the kickbacks, then asparagus stage, then this six should be with five. And then those launch, the asparagus off, uh, to this 
stack separator. Oh, dear lord. Needs to be moved up. And then the parachutes are all at the top, but that's just to protect them from firing in the wrong stage. I'll decide when to fire. Basically, the parachutes are at the top because I don't know if I'm going to get rid of one of these. I'm, I don't know if I have enough fuel to keep um, these two rockets or not, uh, which changes the stage of the parachutes. So RHD-17 is all set to go, and then it's sister ship. Let me just double check one last time. Oh, dear lord, I have a lot of ships. At some point, I should probably clean them up. It's sister ship is... Likewise, we have the SRBs and the mammoths. Kick all the SRBs out. Asparagus stage the mammoths. Fire the wolf and the... What were these? Bobcats? The wolf and the bobcats together. Asparagus stage the bobcats out. Asparagus uh, drop the wolf. And fire all the parachutes. Yeah, this looks correct as well. All right, guys. Well, that means I have two rockets ready to go. My only other issue is um, the RHD-17. Um, I don't necessarily have the RCS set up correctly. So let me get back to that right now. And then I'll, uh, on top of that, this has just been one giant uh, episode of... Uh, shipbuilding, and I'm not entirely sure I'm going to have time to do um, the launches. We'll see. So RHD-17-5 is the stage that is going to connect. Now, the only other issue I see here is that we're not going to be able to actually connect anything because uh, our docking port is a little bit too recessed. So let's go into Structure and add a bunch of structural fuselages to lengthen the core of the ship out. Uh, these are really light. These don't weigh a lot. And that way we'll actually be able to do the docking physically. Uh, there is definitely a make it longer Viagra joke in there. But uh, I won't do that. I won't go there. Uh, so now to make sure that this structural part doesn't flail around or whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and strut it out. Um, because I might be docking in the dark, uh, we will also add some lights. Save this. What else haven't I thought of? Uh, the RCS fuels, yes. So, I'm really bad at <laughs> RCS, I'm not going to lie, but um, let's drop some thruster blocks. Now, the issue is thrusters really should be four, not six, so that they're directional. And um, if I'm being honest, I have six symmetry here not four so it's gonna be a little weird I'm gonna to have to figure out how to control this craft well so I'm gonna make sure that uh, now I have the basic thruster blocks here um, I probably want front so I can slow down more easily We'll add another set of those. So they've thrust upwards to slow us our forward motion down. I don't need the inverse because I'll have engines for that. Um, and then these are our left and rights. And I think what I'm going to do is... Have it... Uh, the place anywheres outwards like this. Oh, that was the wrong symmetry there. That was a time six symmetry. 
I need times four. The reason I need times four is there's like four directions, right? Uh, I don't want to control the ship in six directions. All right, so that's gonna have to do for my RCS. Now I'm pretty sure, barring any glaring errors that I've made, uh, we're set to go, which is pretty cool. Uh, the problem for you all is that this was just one giant episode of shipbuilding. Um, so here's the thing. If you see any glaring errors with my ship, all you gotta do is let me know, and I can fix it before I launch next episode. Next episode, of course, I will be advancing time to the Duna launch. In fact, I might do that off camera so you don't have to watch me just, like, time warp a bunch. And then launch, basically, both ships to Duna, uh, paired together one after another in the launch window, and then get into Duna orbit and uh, combine those two ships. And then those two ships will then separate and then make individual landings on Duna in different biomes, grab all of the beautiful science, bring it all home, and then I'll probably have maybe enough science to complete my entire research tree, if not enough, close to enough. So we'll have to see. So thank you all for watching. Thanks for being patient about all this crazy shipbuilding, but I think you understand what I'm going with now. And uh, I tried to explain everything I did so that you can understand how these two missions will work together. Adios, everybody.